Okay, so let me go ahead now and show you guys what I did with the cabbage um, and how I took care of that. I'll go back and show you the clips of where I harvested it or where I brought it in and showed it to you and then I'll show you what I did with it. Uh, we are actually on a little getaway so my videos are kind of uh, hodgepodge. hodgepodge. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the cabbage today and then tomorrow you'll see our day one of our trip. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note And we'll drive real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. Brian and I are getting ready to go to a young lady in our church. She's signing her college scholarships and she is a great basketball player and a great girl she is a wonderful human being and we're so excited to go watch her but first i wanted to show you what we harvested out of the garden we went ahead and harvested some of my cabbage some are very small so let me go ahead and tell you <laughs> some are normal size um i did leave about four i think we left about four maybe five out there um What's happening is we got a tropical storm coming in, so it's going to bring tons and tons of rain. Then it's going to turn off really cold, and then Bryant and I are going on a little getaway. And I'm afraid while we're gone, um, I, I just don't know what the weather is going to do. So I went ahead and harvested some, most of them. There's about probably four still out there. Hold on, let me show you what we brought in. Okay, this one, of course, is the biggest, and these two are pretty good size. These two are teeny tiny, <laughs> um, but I'm so excited. I, I did not do anything other than stick the plants in the ground. I mean, that is all we did. There was no fertilizer, no nothing, and, and I did it in the soil that really needs to be worked on, so it was not even the best soil, so um, I'm actually very excited with what I got. Um, I think I'm going to ferment some sauerkraut and then I think I'm going to can some coleslaw. I got to pick up some carrots and, um, and then of course I think I'll cook up one. So, uh, I'm super excited and I just had to show you guys. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to try with these cabbages is I'm going to try my hand at, um, sauerkraut fermenting some sauerkraut and all I'm gonna do is just shred this super I'm gonna cut this in half shred it super fine and I have a bowl here that I'm just gonna put it in so I'm gonna show you I'm just gonna gonna turn it where it's cut and I'm just shredding it super duper fine So this is a trial process. I have never made sauerkraut. I remember my mom telling me about her family making sauerkraut when she was a little girl and it was in a big crock and they kept it outside and they would have to go and stir it and, you know, I don't know stir it, it's the right word, but um, check it anyway. So I'm just going to shred this cabbage up. I'll bring you back once I get it. I may do two heads. Um, yeah, I may do two heads of cabbage for the sauerkraut. And then the rest we'll do in canning up some coleslaw. Okay, y'all. Here is my bowl of beautiful cabbage. I did a large head or a normal size head and then a small one. So you want to use... Um, a tablespoon of salt per 
head. So since the other one was really small, I, I'm going to go with a tablespoon and a half for this bowl. And um, so here it is. I've shredded it up. It looks beautiful. Now you want to use salt that um, does not have iodine in it. And a lot of your table salt that you get at the grocery store does. Um, you could use Redmond's Real Salt or you could use Pink Himalayan Salt. I don't have either one of those right now, uh, but I do have my canning salt, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to sprinkle. There's one tablespoon, and now I'm going to go in with a half. There we go. Okay, so now what you want to do is, I know you're not at a good angle. I didn't get out my tripod this morning. So... All right, as you just want to get in here and be sure the salt is well distributed. So I'm just going to make sure it's well distributed. Then I'm going to let it sit for about 15 minutes and let it start bringing out the juices. And then I'm going to really get in here and work it and massage it. But right now I'm just trying to distribute the salt among all the cabbage so it can pull out um, some liquid. All right, while we're waiting for the salt to do its magic on that other cabbage, I've gotten out my um, dollar yard sale food chopper or food processor. Yeah, food processor is what it's called. And I'm just going to cut up the rest of my cabbage to, um, to go in here. I think I may save one small head out just to... Um, um, cook up fry up and eat I've got some carrots over there I need to um, peel a couple um, and get those in here as well and we're gonna can up some coleslaw okay everyone I've got all my cabbage chopped I ended up actually chopping most of it by hand I'm just not a real big gadget person and sometimes it's just easier for me to do things by hand. And so now I've shredded up. I've already got one carrot in here. And I'm going to start with two. And if I need to add some, I can. But I'm just shredding this away. It actually took no time at all to shred two carrots. Okay, all right, let's get this in here. I'm gonna get it stirred up. And see if I need any more. Well, the one thing I did see is I needed a bigger bowl. So here it is. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of salt. And there again, I'm gonna use my canning salt. Um, just cause I have it out. And I'm just going to let this sit. I'm going to stir this around and let it sit while I massage my sauerkraut. But let me, I'm going to grab a big spoon. I've washed my hands a hundred times this morning getting cabbage off of it. <laughs> now i got to wash my, my island because I have carrots and stuff. I think this is a perfect amount of carrots and salt. One reason I changed from the food processor is it was getting at what I thought was too fine. And um, I want it to stand up to being canned. So, okay, we're going to let that sit. And I'm going to get my bowl of... And you can see the water is just shining. It's softer. It's starting to wilt down some. And so I am just going to massage it and squeeze and massage and squeeze and massage. And uh, when we come back, I'll get my other tripod out so you can actually see, okay? So we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, guys, as you can see, the cabbage is super soft and look at all that liquid down there. Um, so just make sure I've got enough salt. I'm gonna take a little piece out of that liquid Give it a taste. It's good and salty. All right. So, now, whatever container you're going to use to leave it on the count, on the, we're, this is going to set on my counter. Um, 
So I want to be sure it's big enough and so forth. So, all right, I'm going to, let me get a funnel. I'm not sure where my funnel is. It's probably in the dishwasher. So we're going to go with it by hand. I'm going to have to get that funnel out for the coleslaw though. All right, now, so I've gone in with a layer and I want to be sure it's, I want to push it down. Now I may have to make up a little more salt water to pour over it, but we'll see. I'm putting a in a little at a time and then I'm smashing it down, making sure I have it way down in there. So yeah, I definitely am gonna have to make up some salty water to pour over it, some brine per se. And we'll definitely pour this water that's in here in there as well. I'm making a mess, y'all. That's okay. That's okay. All right. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing this once I get it full to the top, or as full as I'm gonna get it. I'll bring you back and show you what we're gonna do. Okay guys, I have mashed it down pretty hard and firm. Um, let me give one more little mash. And there's liquid almost to the top, but there's still some liquid in this bowl that I'm gonna pour in here. And that actually may cover it. I don't even think I'm gonna make any salty water. I think I'm just gonna add just a little bit of water. Just regular water, because there's plenty of salt already in there. And I just want just a little bit more liquid. Not much at all. All right. Okay, so you want all your sauerkraut down below the liquid. And um, I don't have the ferment kit. I'm gonna put that on my Christmas list to give the family <laughs> that I want a fermenting kit. But I saw this idea and I thought it was a one. I don't remember where I saw it. It was on another YouTube, I'm sure. Um, but I've washed an outer leaf and I'm just gonna put that down in there spread it out to keep all of the other cabbage down below the liquid and just in case let me find my little ramekin i have these teeny tiny i got cabbage in it <laughs> i have these teeny tiny little ramekins and i'm just and it fits down in there so i'm just going to set that as a weight so now it's double protected Okay, so what do I do with it now? I am going to put on a ring and lid. I, like I said, I do not have a fermentation kit. You need a lid that will burp. You will need a lid, uh, a lid where the, the gases can escape, but no oxygen can get in. So I'm just gonna put this on like that. I'm not even screwing it down. It's just barely on. Now I'm going to find a place over to the side on my countertop. But first, <laughs> I'm going to find a bowl, a dish, a dish towel at the least. You want to set it in or on something that will protect your counters. Um, because um, in a day or two, bubbles are going to start coming, and if 
you know, you don't burp, some liquid can escape. So, just for protection of my countertops, I'm setting it in a bowl. Here is my beautiful jar of sauerkraut that in a week or so will be sauerkraut. Um, I hope. <laughs> so, we're in this together, y'all. Okay, so, um, I'm going to clean up. We're still waiting on the cabbage. Uh, the coleslaw is just going to marinate in that little bit of salt. There wasn't much, just a little bit. And I'm going to clean everything up and wash my funnel. And we'll get ready to start the brine for that and um, to can up some coleslaw. Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and start on our brine for our coleslaw. Now, what I'll do is when I get it canned, I will... Um, drain this brine off and maybe even rinse it depending on you can eat this right out of the jar as like a pickled coleslaw or you can drain it off and add your mayonnaise and stuff and make actual coleslaw so um that's what we're doing so in my pot here i've got four cups of sugar i wasn't sure how much brine i was going to need so i'm actually doubling the recipe um so four cups of sugar in here I'm going in with a half a cup of water I've got some distilled vinegar here, some white vinegar, and I'm going in with two cups of vinegar. And let's see, these haven't been opened. I'm going to have to open these. We're going in with two teaspoons of both celery seed and mustard seed. And I'm actually maybe going a little light on those um, just because I don't normally put those things in my coleslaw. And that's what I kind of want to use this for. I do think it'll give it a great flavor. But I'm going to maybe just a scant lighter than two teaspoons. Okay. All right, we're gonna get this on to heat up and dissolve the sugar. While that's heating up, I'm gonna get some liquid in some water and vinegar in my water bath canner, get it heating and get my jars in here to get them. Um, oh no, this is gonna be a cold pack, so I don't have to do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna get the water in it and have it ready. I'm not gonna turn anything on because um, we're putting cold stuff in cold jars it needs to start off in a cold canner. So, all right, now that that's settled. Okay guys, I have heated my brine and um, made sure everything was dissolved, let it boil for just a little bit, turned it off and it's gonna be cooling. While it's cooling, I'm gonna fill my jars with the slaw mixture. All right, we're just gonna Fill these jars up with coleslaw. I'd have no idea how many jars I'm gonna get. If by chance I have a little bit left that won't fill up a, a jar, I'm gonna make a little coleslaw out of it. We'll just have to wait and see. I've never, this is again something I have never done before. So, y'all are coming along with me for a lot of first. I guess this could go under our recipe on trial segment. <laughs> In fact, I have grown cabbage before, um, but I've always grown it in the spring. And I usually only do like one or two plants. Um, never have I done 12 plants and I've never done it in the fall. So this was kind of a first. So this video is full of a lot of first. Okay, so I'm gonna keep filling these up like this and I'll bring you back in just a little bit. I'm still a going, still filling up these jars. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have eight, but we'll see. 
Okay, y'all, I ended up getting six jars. I have a little bit left over that I may make me a little small thing of coleslaw. Um, but anyway, what we're going to do now is we are going to fill these jars up with the brine. It's not cooled all the way, but it's not scalding hot either. Grabbing my ladle if I remember where I keep it. Oh, guys, you know what else I forgot to put in here? I forgot something else. We're going to put in a half a teaspoon of pickle crisp. This just helps everything stay nice and crispy and crunchy. And so I'm going to put a half a teaspoon in each jar. I do find it does help keep everything crispy. especially things that you pickle. Okay. I'm glad I remembered that before I got any further. Let's put just a little bit more brine in this one. All right, I may have to add, make more brine. I'm not sure, we'll see. If so, this will be a very long pickling process, longer than I had anticipated. My nose itches. Okay, guys, I'll bring you back just as soon as I'm done here. Now, guys, I'm in the world's worst to forget to debubble, but you don't want to forget that process. You definitely want to just stick something in and be sure all air bubbles are removed. Um, I am terrible at forgetting to do that. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to take a napkin, and this is crucial. You definitely don't want to forget to do this, um, is you want to clean off the rim, especially with that sticky syrup brine that I put in there. You want to be sure it is completely off the top of the jar, that there's no little pieces of cabbage on the top of the jar, because that is what can stop it from actually sealing. And that's the most important part of canning is to be sure you get a good seal. So you want to be sure to go through and clean all of them. Now when you put your lids on, you just want to tighten them with your fingertips. Don't come down here with your whole hand and just, you want them tight, but not like bound on there, never to come off tight. And I just try to use my, when the, you hear a lot of people say fingertip tight, and that's what it means. You're just tightening it with your fingertips, not your, you're not getting your whole arm and hand in there. Just the fingertips. All right. Can't wait to try this. All right, I'm going into my canner now. Um, I'll be putting them in my canner. The water's cold in here, so it's going in cold water, or it's not really cold because I think I ran it from the tap out of hot, but it's not 
it hasn't been turned on, so it's not going to break the jars. You just don't want to shock the jars and end up breaking them. Okay. Now I need to add just a little bit of, no I don't, it's submerged. Never mind, you want to be sure that they are completely submerged. So I'm going to turn my burner on, I'm going to put the lid on, and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'll start timing it, and I'll time it for 15 minutes. But I don't start my timer until it comes to a rolling boil. Well, y'all, I, I had some leftover slaw mix, so I made me some coleslaw, some mix some mayonnaise, some black pepper, um, a little bit of vinegar, and... Um, uh, instead of sugar, normally I add sugar. I just grabbed a, <clears throat> a sweetening pack <clears throat> and used that. And this does not tell me anything about the canned slaw that we're <laughs> processing over here. So there's no brine or anything on this. But it does tell me that my ca I can grow a delicious cabbage. <laughs> it is so good. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I have tasted my cabbage and Oh my goodness, it is delicious. Well, my kitchen is an absolute, at least these are clean. I just need to let them dry and put them away and put all this stuff away. Um, here is my coleslaw. And so I'm eager to try it. I'm so excited. I gotta take the rings off, label it, and then put them back. But they've all sealed perfectly. Um, so, and then of course, here sits my sauerkraut, um, just waiting the next step, I guess. So, um, anyway, uh, and I'm just going to let it sit and just make sure it's burped <laughs> periodically. Anyway, I wanted to show you one more thing. I know this is a weekend recap and I know this video is probably getting longer than I had intended. Um. I don't know if you guys remember when I had Wilson. Wilson was my sourdough starter. And um, I eventually threw Wilson out. And um, so I thought I'd show you. I haven't even fed it today and it is still beautiful. Look at all those bubbles. I have to share with Caroline what to do while I'm gone. I need to transfer it to another um, another bowl because I don't think this one's going to be big enough. Um, but I think, y'all help me name it. Um, it's sourdough starter, so I thought about naming it self. It's a self starter. <laughs> and, I mean, you know... I think that's pretty clever. But what do you think I should name it? Should I just go back with the name Wilson? Because, um, and Wilson came from the movie Castaway, where he named the ball Wilson. Wilson! So, um, I don't know. Y'all help me name my starter. Because I do like giving them a name. Because they're alive. They're alive. And I have to feed it. And um, so, um, and actually another reason... Let me tell you another reason I thought self, and, and I may just overrule everybody and stick with self. I don't know. But I thought self would be good because you discard. Like, when I feed it tonight, I'm going to throw part of it away or toss part of it or discard out of my starter a portion of it. And I thought, spiritually speaking, we should get rid of self, take self out. And feed it, feed ourselves the Holy Spirit and the Lord and so forth. So, you know, kind of the flower being um, uh, the Lord and God's Word and the starter, you know, getting rid of self and putting back and feeding it with the Holy Spirit. Anyway, I mean, I know that's like really far-fetched, but hey. Anyway, the funny part was self and self-starter, but... I need to be more of a self-starter. But anyway. 
<laughs> so, okay, on to whatever's next, which may be couch time. Who knows? This may be a really long weekend wrap-up. Okay, so there you have it. There was the cabbage video. So stay tuned to tomorrow for a little bit of our trip and some Q&A. We'll start answering some of our questions on some of parts of this getaway. So um, enjoy the, I hope you enjoyed the cabbage and I will see you next time. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. <laughs>